The following podcast is a W2M Network original production. Visit W2Mnet.com for all of our other great podcasts, plus news, reviews, articles, and opinions from the worlds of wrestling, video games, football, and entertainment. Hello and welcome to another Soccer to the Max Weekend Edition. I am your host, Sean Garman. Here we are one person down as uh, Rachel is uh, doing a, a thing. I think she has a, it was either a work thing or a school thing, I couldn't remember which one. Uh, but at least uh, Eric is here with me, so this should still, very much like the midweek, going to be a, a tremendous show still. A- absolutely, just forewarning everybody, I'm in a bad mood. <laughs> Uh-oh. Well, I mean, I don't blame you, uh, the way Orlando lost. Uh, I, yeah. Is- yeah, between misadventures that I'll get into on the upcoming episode of Point of Viewer, then Orlando against Houston. Not going to talk about that one. Just that. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, we do kind of got to talk about it, but uh, we'll we'll try to be brief on it to keep Eric sane here. I mean, honestly, there's when you win 4 nil, there's not a whole lot to, to really say other than, man, you you beat that team. So and it um, been worse. Yeah, and it, could, it certainly could have been worse. You know, uh, MLS Player of the Month uh, did his job uh, when needed, uh, when he could actually stop the goals from happening here. So, yes, yeah, so we will get into MLS Week 9 recap. Uh, hopefully it is week nine, as long as MLS doesn't change what week it is in the middle of this podcast, we'll be all right. Um, NWSL week four, uh, we'll get a little bit into that. Uh, Eric watched the Lifetime game, and then we'll kind of just talk about scores. We really didn't get to watch too much of those games, and Nashville is set to head into the USL next season and hoping that that will help their bid to get into Major League Soccer. So we'll t- we'll talk about that. Really, there's not been a lot of news uh, since the midweek. So it's kind of, other than uh, they did have the final of the under-17s CONCAF Championship uh, today and Mexico won on penalties 5-4. So yeah, Mexico gets to uh, hold respectable, the trophy. Respectable. Penalties are respectable. Yeah, certainly. And, I mean, they already qualified, so it doesn't really matter. Um, but, uh, you know, again, cool that the U.S. got in both the under-20s and under-17s. And I still can't believe that we're talking about in two weeks, in two weeks of shows here, Eric, we'll be talking about the start of the under-20s. So, I so then this is what happens when you have a tournament, a global tournament on an annual basis. There, there there's no restrictions on scheduling. I, well, it's conflict. two years. It's every two years. Really, I thought it was annually. No, no, no. Under twenty is under seventeen is every two years, like Gold Cup. Huh. Yeah. Okay. I could have sworn. But I mean it. Never mind. <laughs> My brain's officially scrambled it's, now. What? They had to do that because you've got the other tournaments going on. Well, this, this, is, this summer. And this is my point. Uh, they have this, and when you have this on a this frequent of a basis, you're going to have some very funky scheduling, especially since you don't have to worry about fixture congestion that you would at the senior level. Now imagine if the big World Cup were biennial. <laughs> Countries would... Oh, freak. God. <laughs> I don't think you could do it biannually. I mean, the uh, not so much the countries would freak about the amount of money they got to put in to renovate stadiums and security. You know, that's not even, not even just the players or whatever. It's the getting the city ready for that every well, two years. If, well, if you don't dole out places to like 
places in Brazil where they have to fill out a bunch of contracts, and one of the sacred football stadiums on the planet is now going into ruin because of it. And if you don't have countries like Qatar that pretty much buy their right to host a World Cup, you wouldn't have to worry about things like that. (laughs) But that's just me. I mean, that's true. But... Hey, uh, they had plenty of time by now to rescind that World Cup for Cutter, and they decided not to. So, we got to deal with the World Cup in December. You ready for this? I'm not. Any- <laughs> hey, I could imagine me hopping on here with a stomach full of eggnog talking about teams that I would have probably never have heard of. I could see myself doing that. Why not, right? I mean, has anyone even seen the uh, cutter play? They're terrible. That's that's kind of all you uh, you know. They're apparently having the FIFA Congress like next week. What? So. Get... Oh, and today was the final of the. Beach Soccer World Cup, which I think yeah, that is. I, I, I saw that on my uh, list. Brazil beat Tahiti 6 nothing. It was only 6? Yeah. Oh. I mean, I tried watching beach soccer back in the day, but to me there was one pretty significant problem that hindered me learning more about beach soccer. What I kept that? falling asleep. <laughs> that uh, does make a difference there. Mm-hmm. Uh, falling us. So that they they kill the club World Cup. Mm, whoa! What they? What? Whoa! What? FIFA Don't doesn't do- have it listed on their. Oh, that's because. Uh, that's because last year already happened. Never mind. Yeah, do not scare me like that. Yeah, but that's I, weird. Like it doesn't. It's not listed. Like they have the under twenties, the Confederations Cup, the under seventeen, which is in India, uh, and that's October sixth to the twenty eighth. Right. And then it goes straight to the World Cup. It doesn't have the Club World Cup in December there. That's weird. Well, I think it's a whole big thing about hosting rights, which, I mean, for the love of God, could they move it to another part of the planet for once? I've got no disrespect to Japan or the UAE, but Christ, there are other countries with other leagues and their capabilities. It's either been like Brazil, uh, Japan, or the UAE, like you said. Yeah, Brazil hosted, like, the first couple iterations in the early 2000s. And then when they created the Toyota Club World Championships, which morphed into the Club World Cup, it's been Japan, 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 UAE for a couple of years, Japan, Japan, Japan. I mean, hey, all love to my Urara Red, Red Diamonds, but, yeah, how many other countries are there in the world? How many other FIFA countries are there? 200 plus? Yeah, and it's like, what, one week? It's like a one week, two week tournament. It's mm-hmm. really not that big a deal. Yeah, because it's... They play like eight games or ten games or whatever. No, well, if you count the fifth and the third place match, nine. <laughs> See? Big deal. Exactly. And if I were in charge, I would revamp that a little bit because... If Auckland City is going to be seriously making it there every single year, then they need to play more than just once if they're going to travel that many thousands of miles. Yeah, it doesn't uh, make it. I mean, look, you can have these under-20s in Korea and the under-17 in India, but you got to have the Club World Cup in the same place every time. That doesn't make any sense. Nope. Uh, no. But hey, this is the uh, another summer of soccer with at least three tournaments back to back. Basically, you get a little bit of time in between uh, Confederations Cup and the Gold Cup, but you get a week 
between uh, the under 20s and the Confederations Cup. So, you know, when we get to talk about that, that's going to be fun. At least the games in Russia won't be at 1 in the morning. So. Thankfully. Although I will be drinking vodka in preparation. <laughs> right? That's, <laughs> that's, that's how you got to celebrate. <laughs> Drink the vodka. Uh, so, getting into the games that uh, happened... Uh, this weekend here in a Major League Soccer in the United States, the the kind of shocker from Sun. Let, let's get into the Sunday games since they were the most recent mm-hmm. here. Minnesota blank. Uh, no, hold on. I should say that there's about only three games where one of the teams actually scored. The, the two both, both teams scored a goal. Uh, you all the that too, huh? All the <laughs> other games. So one team scored, the other team did not. <laughs> like it was, uh, and some of it was not like a total domination by the other team. Some of it was just futility by the team with zero. Like yeah, because I was looking, because I was looking at the scores, and I'm like, what the hell? Did MLS decide this was going to be near shutout week, and I didn't get that memo? <laughs> I mean, he. Yeah, I mean Friday or was it or was Saturday? Well, they had a game on Friday too, right? So. Yeah, they did. But if you didn't watch that, be thankful because aside from Breck Shea scoring, oh, that match was hard to watch. That's another situation where, especially the first half, I almost fell asleep. Yeah, so Vancouver won. One nil. nil. Then you had a bunch of a couple other one nils. Three nil, where Philadelphia actually did something. Columbus, <laughs> two nil, four nil, three nil. Oh, then you get the two two game, three nil again, two nil, and then you get the game that ended at three one. So and as a side man. note. The 2-2 two, two match, that was 2-0 for the longest time. Yeah, at least to the first half. And really shouldn't have... I mean, one of them was a uh, Giovanni Dos Santos being there at the right time. And it just... Just the set pieces, guys. Set pieces. Come on now. It's been preached about forever. Gotta pay attention. But, uh, yeah. So, you know, Vancouver... They beat Colorado... Colorado is about they're just shooting blanks at this point. Like hmm. just, that team obviously came up at the wrong end of the trade. Because yep. what has Minnesota been doing to say that trade? Oh hey they, there. they keep winning. They've been a big time deal. They scored three in the win, don't you know? <laughs> yeah, and then <laughs> Yes, folks, the impression is back and in a good way this time. But Vancouver, you know, scores, and then Colorado can't do jack on offense still, even though they they had to go get those forwards. And, uh, you know, Toronto, Josie Altador putting them on the board and beating Seattle. So, I mean, that's that's good for Toronto. Getting a little bit of that revenge back from, I don't even know if you can call it that, honestly, from MLS Cup. But. For a Okay, if this was the MLS Cup Final this year, yes, I would say it's revenge. But your lone regular season meeting, no. This just leaves a bit of a better taste in your mouth. But then you get pissed off even more because you're like, well, why couldn't we do this a few months ago at home when it, you know, counted more? And, you know, we could have that trophy and, you know, snub it in all these American teams' faces that, ha-ha, we're north of the border and we got this. <laughs> Drink out of it in front of Don Garber. Okay, I'm projecting at this point. I might need to stop now. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think, uh, don't get too carried away now. I don't want Don Garber coming and uh, banging on the door being like, Hello? What did I do to you, Eric? Yeah, and I would be yeah. like, hey, Don, sit down. You got some time. I can give you a list. But that's not important right now. <laughs> that's all that matters. Let's see that. So, hold on. 
Oh, I forgot. There was another the the Canadian Premier League that's being it has been ratified. Yeah, you I still need to. You told me about that, and I'm like, they've tried that before, and it failed. Hashtag Toronto Metro's Croatia. So how would this work? Would they just accept being the championship or something of Canada? Because I can't imagine that the three MLS teams are all of a sudden going to just leave MLS. No, what they would do is... I guess they would pull their non-MLS teams like Edmonton and Ottawa and use those as two to create a Canadian league. And I would think the winner of the Canadian Premier League would play in a four-team tournament with the three MLS teams for the Canadian Club Championship rather than how they have it now, which... What is it? Ottawa and Edmonton play each other, and then the winner plays one of the MLS teams, and then the other two MLS teams play each other, and then they have a playoff and a final. Which I get, but you could really do better. Uh, Alright, so apparently the deal has been in talks for months. Uh, once the uh, 2026 World Cup joint bid was going to happen. Uh, it's, oh, one of those deals. One it's, supposed of those to be, deals. it's supposed to be uh, Canada's top flight professional league. Uh, but right now they only have two ownership groups. One in Hamilton and one in Winnipeg. So, oh. Oh. And, and uh, next, they, they're going to play a shortened season in 2018, and then they'll play a, a full season in 2019. Okay, when are they going to play? This says in August, the league is set to begin play in August of 2018. Okay. With a short inaugural season, a more official launch is scheduled to come in the spring of 2019. Okay, um... No disrespect to Winnipeg. I have a very good friend in Winnipeg. Shout out to you, Kara. Very long story. Very fun story. But, um, Winnipeg weather is very, very nuts. In the summer, it's like how it is here in Florida. In the winter, you could be up to your knees in snow. They need to account for this. I'm assuming they would just not play in the winter at all because Canada is just ridiculous in the winter. Not to mention, where would they even play? I mean, would they be borrowing some of the CFL stadia? And we do it here for the NFL, right? True, but I mean, yeah, and you see how it's a whole big uproar in originally with the NFL, and then everybody and their mother decides, oh, we want a stadium of our own. Oh, we want to get soccer specific. When in some markets, I want to just punch you and say, no, you're going to stay where you are. It's going to be multi-purpose, mixed use, easier on the environment, and damn it, you're going to like it. I am, but then they build quite a few uh, the stadiums in Canada for the Women's World Cup. So... You know, and, and most of those are being used by the three MLS teams that are already there. So hey, yeah, well, uh, for MLS, like for example, Vancouver, they are actually not soccer specific. That was a CFL stadium. Toronto, they're actually they actually moved the CFL team to BMO Field because the Rogers Center told them to get out. Montreal. They also share with a CFL team, Le Stade Saputo. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm assuming that will just keep happening with all the other Canadian teams. I mean, so it's interesting. Glad that Canada, I guess, will have officially have their own league. We'll Again. Uh, yeah, hopefully it lasts. Mm. And, you know, it can help improve... 
the uh, Canadian national team eventually to where yeah, they, that's they can the start one, qualifying for things. That's the one league where I would accept a sweetheart deal with Kyle Laren. He can't go anywhere else but to the Canadian league. <laughs> I don't think he's going to be going there. Well, then he'll just stay in Orlando and keep being awesome. I win either way. Let's let's hope he stays there. I just, man, that's hard to. Don't to ruin see. my buzz, Sean. <laughs> well, Orlando already ruined it for you by losing four nil to Houston. And, it, and, it, and admittedly, it could have been like seven, maybe eight. I mean, Jesus Christ! I. Ugh. Yeah, uh, <laughs> it it probably should have been too. But uh, Bednick made quite a few pretty impressive saves. Uh, it, you know, it's just, honestly, they need to, uh, they, they need, uh, that's so weird, though. They fought their hearts out 2-1 uh, against uh, Toronto in the midweek. They might have been tired here. Mm-hmm. Houston gets an early penalty. And then a lot of this is just counters where Kyoto is just, or uh, Manutas, Mm -hmm. are just going full speed at Bednik. And it's just like, what's he supposed to do at that point? Nobody's helping. Guys are getting beat. Just, yeah. And they're they're not even putting it. They didn't even put the balls in position to where Bednik could get a fingertip on it or die for a save. It's just like, I'm going to stop from about 20 yards out. I'm going to put ridiculous spin, put it in a corner. You can't reach it, and you're going to just stand there and pout. And this is how it's going to go down. And that's what they did. Yeah, it was just a pretty impressive performance all around for Houston. They just... Attacked at will, and I don't know what happened to that Orlando defense, but it was non-existent. Simple. Or, there was no specter. Yeah, I mean, look, yeah, true. When you're you're missing <laughs> your your big guy back there, that's that's gonna hurt you. But it, I mean, they had chances going forward, though. Uh, you they, know, they did, and I mean, and again, some of the. I got to question some of the choices in the starting 11. I mean, and I especially know, is Rivas hurt? And I don't know about it because if he's not, yeah, he's a little bit fall greedy, but put him at the top of the diamond and have him do something. Yeah, no, they, he brought in Kaka second, uh, in the second half. So Which was smart. Right. And, I mean, I mean, you know, it's, they they were, they had opportunities, just didn't hit them, or just some of the things, too, it's like Ricardo Clark is making moves in the midfield, and you're just not stopping him. Like, no. what no. is going on with you? Ricardo Clark is no spring chicken here, and he's... He's okay. deking you like it's this is hockey or something. Not just Ricardo Clark, but Demarcus Beasley. I mean, again, nothing against him, but he did some things that he normally shouldn't be able to do in that match. Uh, mm. Yep. So sadly, the uh, th- they go from. Being undefeated to losing two in a row uh, in one week. So yeah. hopefully... Can't, can't win on the road, and there's a good expression that I could use in this case, but I won't. Oh, come on. Uh, you gotta say it. I, I'll, t- I'll tell you off there. <laughs> it, it's got that sort of a twinge to it, if you know what I mean. Oh, okay. <laughs> We'll, uh, we'll leave it at that, then. The tease will be for no one here listening. I just get to... I get to, uh, to hear the tease myself. That's that's fine. So, you know, like I said, uh, a lot of teams 
not scoring uh, in this, uh, or at least on on one side. Uh, the total opposite of this game was New England and Columbus. With Columbus gets an early goal from Kamara, which is an absolute beaut. He just mm-hmm. gets the ball, puts it in the corner, spins it, everything. And New England absolutely will not leave Columbus alone. Just bombards them constantly. And it's just missed opportunity, missed opportunity, Columbus defending, Columbus defending, uh, goalkeeper makes big ass save. I mean, absolutely crazy. And the second goal was another just uh, well worked play by by Columbus to to get it. But it just uh, it was a free flowing open game. It was fun to watch. Just, oh yeah. Just man, I, I felt like God. How's Columbus gonna hold on here? Simple. New England has never really cared about. Well, I can't say never, but over the past several years, they haven't cared about finishing. I'm yeah. sorry if you have a team that you have even half of the talent like you are supposed to. That's a two-two draw. You maybe steal a three-two win. Oh, and this is a team that just did that. They went and drew with the the Sounders. So. Yeah, yet a certain someone said, I don't think New England can do that twice in a row. I wonder who that was. That was you. Exactly. And I remember a certain reaction from that saying, oh, come on, oh, this and that, oh, they do with Seattle. Give them some credit. Hmm. I'll give you credit there. Squid Domus reigns supreme once again. For like one game while uh, then Minnesota makes everybody look like fools. (laughs) Okay, I admit I whiffed. Squid Domus is not perfect. (laughs) It's okay. We all, uh, we, both of us missed quite a bit here. It's... That's what's great about MLS. It truly is. You don't know what's going to happen every week. Uh, I, I enjoy this. The fact that, hey, you, you really do have the parody. So uh, it makes it fun. It makes it fun to watch this league. Uh, just, I, again, New England just, it's so weird how helter-skelter they are. They can go and score at will to come back. or And in certain games, they just... They get nothing, and uh, I mean it was in Columbus. I I guess you could factor that in a little bit, but just it, it was just a, a total fun game to watch because they were just going end to end, and, and Columbus was trying to just keep New England out. And uh, hopefully we get uh, more games like that, honestly. But uh, sadly, that's that's not what you get for a, a lot of these. Um, FC Dallas remains undefeated, blanking Real Salt Lake 3-0. This was just... I felt like Real Salt Lake was just never in this. Did you expect them to be? (laughs) I mean, they got some players here. It's not like they just got nobody. I mean, they were undefeated until last week for my pecky. And then you have these two games and just... It looks like you're back to the old Real Salt Lake again. Yeah, because, again, new voices only work but for so long. And I, I do want to point out that the last goal, Ruti basically just got like a free like open goal, and then the first one was a penalty. So, you know, really only one was like, you know... But you would still agree that it was still a sloppy performance. Right. All right, then. My point still stands. <laughs> it's just oh. Dallas is Dallas, and they just converted on their opportunities. Hey, that's that's what matters at the end of the day. This is how you win. You <laughs> you score on your chances, and uh, Dallas did that. Eruti has been amazing this year. Uh, did not expect that from him this season. He's just been... A freaking fire rod for the rest of the team, and uh, I mean it's RSL at home though. 
shouldn't be happening. Uh, you know, and they, maybe they got punched in the mouth a little bit from that early penalty, which it seemed like I didn't really even understand what was going on there. All of a sudden, I just go and see him going to the spot. I was like, all right, uh, whatever just happened here. The referees have been making some weird decisions this week between that and random yellow cards out of nowhere. It's like... Oh, yeah. Huh. That was huh. Uh, quite the theme this week, too, with the random yellow card. Random ye- This is not a ye- That's a yellow? Okay. Okay, that's a yellow when it should have been a red. Why is that a yellow? Hey, ref. Uh, are, are you trying to dole out stuff to make people match your shirts? Come on now. Come on now. <laughs> what about the San Jose coming in and just torching Portland? Yeah, and thanks to whom? Wondolowski. Thank you. Yes. That was a freaking... Nika that scored goal. that opener, but I mean, come on. It's still the Wando show. <laughs> and the goal that Wando scored was just, if that's not up there for goal of the week, that's a travesty. That was It beautiful. should be. And then to add a second as just a little a bit of an extra exclamation point. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, San Jose was was on it. Uh, for, for this game, uh, I can't remember his name. The 23 for San Jose, he was just lighting him up with passes everywhere, just right where it needed to be. And this, they had a bunch of times where it just it barely missed, or he had to save. Hoson had a couple of nice shots that got saved, so it could have been more. Could have been more for Portland, honestly, or against Portland. Mm. And uh, Chicago go up 2-0, and then they squander this lead and end up getting the, you know, Galaxy make the comeback. Giovanni Dos Santos finally gets him a goal and becomes relevant again. But, uh... Inky, but I'm sure he'll take it. Yeah, Chicago really, I think they screwed the pooch on this. You go on the road, you're up 2-0... Heading into the second half. Well, and not just heading into the second half. You're up 2-0 inside of about 20 minutes, give or take. Right. And then all of a sudden, you weather the storm or the rest of the first half just fine. That's that's the Galaxy's MO lately, though. Is, hey, let's turn it on the last 20 minutes. And then that's just it. I mean, that first goal... I can understand, but you get into the 60th minute, you're still up 2-1, you give up a corner, and then you pretty much have a mass brain fart. How does that help anybody? Uh, Yeah, I had two set pieces, too. So, Mm -hmm. you know, this uh, this is getting... You'd think Chicago would be paying more attention at this point, but uh, mm-hmm. they, they weren't. Uh, I, I will give uh, the the new signing for Chicago, uh, the striker, can't remember his name right now. Saganovic or Nikolic or... I think Nikolic, I think. He's, he's got, what, like six goals at this point? Mm-hmm. Right? So he's working out, and everybody was... I myself included were wondering about what he was going to be doing this season, and he certainly has paid dividends for them. So, uh, got to give uh, the people scouting some credit. They're just doing their job, and you know Schweinsteiger, <laughs> our dear friend, he's he's doing his work still. He didn't score a goal this time, but he but was vital in that crazy. first goal. Yeah, he, he didn't score, but then again, neither did Manchester United, which added further discipline. Oh, don't get me started on that. Yeah. Yes. Damn, Mourinho. Mm. Let's just go into a game and just... Our point is not to score. Just let, let's see that. Mm. It's uh, I'm, I'm looking at this and it's pretty amazing actually that uh, 
this stat that I'm seeing. Uh, entering 2017, there were exactly 50 players in the history of 50 or more career regular season goals. In the first quarter of the season, we've seen two more added to that number, Freddie Montero mm-hmm. and Javier Morales. And then you got Fernando Adi, Davi Villa with 47 each. Lee Wynn, Sebastian Giovinco, and Josie Alter with 44. Gosh, those guys already have uh, that many goals in the league. Chris Pontius, CJ Sapong, Jack McInerney. Yeah, those are guys that have been around. I understand mm-hmm. that. Diego Valeri and Federico Iwain, all with 42. Like, geez. Even Kyle Lahren has 37 right now. We'll think Big about it. Machine. Think about it. What MLS has done the past five years. They are trying to get strikers. They've got strikers that are your top elite when it comes to scoring efficiency. What do I mean by that? The gold standard is if you can score on average every other match. You look at Laren, his pace, Altidore's pace, Iwain's, all those other guys that you mentioned, yeah. They're up in the 35, 40, 50 goal club. Look at the matches that they played. These are the kind of uh, strikers MLS wants. Now that they're getting more and more of them, you're going to start seeing this club expand. Now, will they be around long enough to threaten any larger barriers? 70, 80, 100? Some of them, no. But with a few of your younger guys, who knows? Yeah, I mean, there's certainly been a glut of having goals and, like you said, strikers that know how to do that, uh, bringing in the international guys and all that. So just uh, an interesting thing of of how much they've been able to score in just a little bit of time that they've been uh, there in the league. I want to talk about this Minnesota thing for a little bit here. This, This is pretty amazing how this turnaround has gone for them of just winning and the team just looking so much better with, you know, with the trade, Sam Cronin, Bobby Shuttleworth coming uh, early in the season when they didn't have a goalkeeper and making that trade with New England uh, to, instead of picking up a striker, they, they pick up a Bobby Shuttleworth and he was, pretty impressive in this game with a broken nose still going was, out there. I was just about to say, yes, I'm going to bleed profusely. No, leave me in. I'm like, wait, what? He's like, no, I'm staying. And I'm like, very nonsensical if you're going to have trouble breathing for 30 minutes, but let's see what happens. And, well, yeah. Who the hell flipped the switch and why didn't it happen sooner? Oh, well, Dan Lottie started playing well. That's another thing, too. It's the the, the super draft pick. Uh, so, you know, you get to, you put Ibarra in the right spots. Man, he's bombing down that left side. They couldn't stop him at all. Uh, they had to put Graham Susie in there to try to plug a hole. because <laughs> They made a mistake at the beginning of, of not having him in there. Christian Ramirez has been great all season, but it's just... It used to be just Christian Ramirez and who else, and now it's that whole team is playing very well, uh, and and like coming together as a squad and playing for each other. They're playing defense better. Of course, it helps when you have Sam Cohen in there, kind of leading your back mm-hmm. six. So and they've kind of stuck with a back five now. All that is is great stuff for for Minnesota looking forward for them so maybe we're looking at minnesota talking about minnesota the way we were talking about atlanta uh instead because atlanta's kind of been up and down yeah it did oh god atlanta today i mean everything was going fine yes they survived the early punch in the mouth with um via's goal come back great effort of their own one one Halftime 1-1, one, one. you blink and then it's 3-1. Uh, I mean, 
now you're starting to see the effects of not having Joseph Martinez because instead of catering to speed in the front, they had to cater to size in the front. But just about every back line they face knows that and targets that. Uh, it's not going to be pretty unless they change, make some changes. Just like with Sporting Kansas City, you get into that air of predictability, teams are going to figure you out. Yep, exactly. you got to be able to mix it up, and that's something that we haven't seen Atlanta do like the way Minnesota has. And just, just to go back to that really quick, They've started Ike Opara and Graham Susie on the same back line. The one game they did not is when they conceded the goals. Yeah, because, again, you sh- instead of trying to mix up your attack, which stagnant, you mix up your defense, which has been damn near pristine. You screw yourself on both ends. <laughs> Yeah, it that doesn't uh, make any sense. Why you change your your back, your back lines? The thing that needs to be solid and the same every time. Yeah. The only reason you change it is for injuries. You know, I, I know Graham Susie had a kind of an issue with I think it was an ankle or, or knee or something. But still, it's like if he can play, play him. Exactly. You were allowing a third of a goal a match. Coming into today. A third. And you give up three. Mm. uh, 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 Unless they get back to their miraculous form. Say goodbye to breaking your goals against record. (laughs) Yep. Exactly. And uh, what's up with DC United again? Ben Olsen calling them posers. After losing to Montreal. Well, they kind of were, but I think they were really more posers after beating Atlanta the way they did. They couldn't even really sustain that too much. So going to Montreal, they decided, hey, Acosta's going to be the man. He's going to be the man. Montreal was like, oh, really? How about that? (laughs) Oh, man. And, I mean, granted, I would have said it in a French accent, but I'm saving that for a special reason. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, it's just, I don't get it. They they were playing well, and then, here we go. Just don't show up. Yeah, again, I said, United's not going to be able to put together two in a row. Squidamas yet again. I, I forgot to, to. I can't believe I forgot to mention that uh, Valeri and Navi didn't play in that Portland game, which that makes a huge difference. Well, uh, yeah, but I mean, you kind of saw and you figured what was going on, and it's like, oh, no Valeri, no Nagby. Okay, that's why. <laughs> right, but I mean, still, it it needs to be pointed out because there's people that just maybe don't know, and they're they're going. Well, that doesn't seem right, yeah. That makes a lot more sense. CJ Sapong turning it up. Three goals. Hat trick for Sapong. Beating uh, New York Red Bull. And now the Red Bull two losses with Mm -hmm. no goals in those Mm -hmm. games, too. I mean, what's going on here, Red Bulls? Like, y'all got to step it up. Too too heavy of a reliance on Sasha Kleistian and Bradley Wright Phillips. Yeah. I mean, you can build a team around two players, but if they're going to be the guys, then they have to show up match after match after match, and that's impossible. Well, and you got to get BWP service, too. He's not a guy that's going to go out there and get it for himself. No. And, I mean, uh, what have you been saying? They really miss who? Ma. Cardi. Yeah, McCarty, he needs... Mm. I mean, Rachel's been pouncing on this, and she's right yet again. You don't have McCarty 
in the midfield, being able to transition, get this service to any of your strikers. And, and, and I said there was going to be bad times on both sides of the Hudson. Well, now it's just one. So speaking of the other team uh, on the other side, of that, how often do you think do you think we see Pirlo that that much anymore? You, you, second no. time he didn't play. No. No. You. They don't need him. It kind of sucks the effort that they. He hurts the team. Him. Yeah. Because I mean, at this point, Patrick Vieira. He knows a thing or two about this in even heavy formations, even though he didn't play in one at Arsenal, really didn't play in one like this for Le Bleu. But at the same time, he's like, I've got all these offensive weapons. I just have to get the right people to get it to these weapons, and this is how it's going to work. And so far, it has almost a perfection. Yep. I mean, you can't mess with wins. No, I mean, Pirlo, older, missing a step, and trying to recapture his glory days. won't play defense, so... No! And that's a spot where you need to be able to double back, and you can't. No! So... (laughs) Uh, I'm glad that he's making the right decision here, and... So... Good for uh, Vieira to stick to his guns there. So, I mean, overall, MLS Week 9, very interesting. Some big upsets. Uh, big, uh, it, it, again, the parody of this league is, is incredible sometimes. Just what you see, uh, trying to predict this league every week on the midweek is just hilarious because you know you're going to get all, almost all of it wrong. Yeah, thanks, Philadelphia. Philadelphia. (laughs) Like, we were wondering about Philadelphia. Well, don't worry about it. They just don't score. And all of a sudden, they're like automatically, hey, I'm going to be here. Hey, I just scored. Hey, I'm going to be here. Hey, I just scored. Hey, I'm going to be right here. Hey, I just scored. Why haven't you done this the first eight matches of the season? Uh, It's got to click, I guess, eventually for them. And, uh, yeah, so Dallas still the only unbeaten team. And uh, they'll be looking to keep that going in the next week. Of course, uh, the midweek we'll get to preview and talk about those games as they go on. I think that's the week that we said there's two games on Wednesday. Oh, So that's going to be fun. But uh, let's move on to the NWSL here. North Carolina still the only undefeated team in the NWSL as they beat the Boston Breakers 1-0. I I hope it's not the situation to where they have a fantastic regular season then go into the playoffs and crap the bed because I've seen that happen before. Another reason why I hate the stepladder format, but... Thankfully, the NWSL is a little bit smarter than that. Yeah, I mean, but North Carolina's proven that they are they are just really this good, and uh, I mean, they've from the beginning they've they've stood out as that that major team, and you know they don't have like all the big stars or whatever. They have Mulis and a few others, and they they work well as a team. So. Credit to them for doing what they got to do. Portland and Seattle draw 2-2. Uh, putting Portland in second uh, with seven points. Uh, Seattle all the way in sixth with five points after the draw. So I mean, Portland, so far, after the big win to open the season, they've kind of been up and down. And Seattle is kind of matching what a lot of the rest of the league is doing right now, kind of just being up and down. The Spirit four yeah. three. That's amazing. That game was oh. tremendous. Uh, freaking thriller of a game uh, for, to to watch. Seriously, go watch that. Thank, thank, thankfully, this I have to. The Spirit finally learned how to score a little bit more. Okay. This is encouraging. 
Yeah, Mallory Pugh already doesn't want to go there. Uh, so I mm, look this this has shades of John Elway, Eli Manning. I mean, for the love of God, just stop it! Just stop it! Stop it! Stop it! Go there, cut your teeth, earn your keep, then we'll talk. Yeah, exactly. I just think that, look, I get you've been doing some things with the national team or whatever, and you want to be around national team players and all that kind of stuff, and you want to be around stars. And But look, you're, what, 19? you got a long road ahead of you. Go to Washington, be the star when you're 21, 22, and you've done some great stuff. Call your shot, then. Go, I want to go to Portland. Exactly. Or I want to go to PSG, or whatever. Don't start going to these other teams to be around stars. If you want to go around these other teams, take your star with you. Right. Build your brand. Be the woman. Be that girl. Then, as you say... You build yourself up some leverage and you can negotiate. Yeah, I just think that it's going around. I mean, you're already getting press for not going to college and whatever. And then kind of ruffling feathers already. That just doesn't set a great tone for me. The league is set up the way it is. just like MLS. Somebody gets your rights when you come in. And that's how it is. You play for that team. Look, I get it. People negotiate. All right. And and they you'll get people to give their way. But a lot of times those people that are coming in, they have the power. You know, the Clint Dempsey's the Michael. I don't think Michael Bradley even chose like some of these guys that picked where they wanted to play. Basically, they have that power, you know, and Mm -hmm. and I, I don't blame them. That's that's what they're supposed to be doing. They're coming. They're deciding to leave Europe to come to that league. They're not going to want to just go to whatever team, and they but they've earned that. They've earned that right. You know, Mallory Pugh exactly. hasn't yet. No, she is not doing the NWSL any favors by coming. All those guys that you mentioned did the MLS a favor by coming home because they didn't well, have to. Having another end of uh, U.S. national team star for the league obviously helps. But what I'm saying is go to the team that needs stars. They need another player that can do well. Great. Washington scored four goals and one. Okay. But yeah, they but had how not. Often is that going to happen? They had not looked good until this game, really. So that's the point, though. They could use Amalia Pew to come in and learn and and get better as the season goes on and be able to become the leader on the team. And then you can really become a star of the league that way instead of being hidden, like Rachel said, behind mm-hmm. five other, six other terrific players. And, yeah, people are going to be talking about her all day long when she does come on the field, you know. But are you going to get minutes? What matters is you get those minutes. Mm-hmm. And then you, you prove to Joe Ellis, look, I, look what I've been doing for Washington. you got to bring me in for the national team. you got to, uh-huh. uh, you know, just I, I, I just don't get the – I get you want to win. I get you want to win immediately. I get that time is short and that you're not guaranteed tomorrow and all that kind of stuff. But it's just – it sounds more like I want to be with my friends mm-hmm. more than, I oh, I don't be, want to be stuck here in Washington with nobody. Yeah, I want to be on a super team. I don't want to be surrounded by mediocrity. That's what this is. Super team Which she fail. probably would have had to deal with in college, too. You know Exactly, so. and guess what? Super teams fail. There's even there's no guarantee that you go to Portland and you have immediate success. You could crash and win. Yeah, look at the Heat. They lost first before they won. Exactly. 
And like I was saying, and like we had discussed this with LeBron, the Cavaliers were wearing some ugly jerseys with very sweet colors. They were 15 and 60, 17. Ridiculous to the point to where at the fourth quarter of a blowout, one of their players actually intentionally missed at his own basket so he could get a rebound, so he could get a triple-double. Things were that bad. He comes out of St. Vincent St. Mary High School. It's like, you know what? I'm going to play for my hometown team. I'm going to turn them around. Lo and behold, he gets them to the finals. It's like, you know what? I'm not getting enough help. Bye. Lo and behold, they go back to pretty much crap. And he's like, yeah, I've won my titles. I'm coming back home. What's happened? He won again, and he's on pace to win potentially yet again. Yep, yep. Is there any problem with this track? No. Mallory, take some notes. <laughs> exactly. Exactly on that part. Uh, and then Chicago wins uh, as well to kind of put them in third. Uh, beating Houston to kind of leave Houston from jumping up there. And I have to say, the Red Stars could have done a lot better. Uh, it was, what, 2-0, two 2-1? Nil, two mm-hmm. 2-0. Nil. Yeah, 2-0. And that first one was kind of a freakish clearance header gone wrong own goal. And even that took a few minutes to wake up the Red Stars' attack. It's like, ah, uh, you can't really rely on that against motivation. Even with a good team like Houston, which they tried and had several great chances of their own, mm, Red Stars were kind of lackluster in that one. Good that they got the win, but not impressive. Martha scores for Orlando, but they let one in late and get the and uh, wind up only getting a point. Ugh. It's going to be a long season for the girls in purple. I think they'll eventually turn it around. I think it just it's going to take some time to gel for that team. Oh, yeah. You know? I'm, not, I'm not saying they won't turn it around. I'm not saying there's a lot of great things when they click, but in the meantime, it's, yeah... Yeah, so, I mean, that's uh, NWSL for this week. And I think the only thing we got left to talk about is the Nashville. That, of course, they're trying to get an MLS expansion team. They've already got a sort of stadium situation in place here with a city-public private partnership with a $110 million soccer stadium at the National Fairgrounds south of downtown. Uh, it's, I mean, like I said, been agreed to with the city. Now uh, the owner is, the, the guy that's kind of spearheading all this, he's bought an ownership stake, uh, the majority ownership stake in the Nashville SC team that is going to go from the PDL to the USL next year to kind of, Hey, we're really going for this. We're we're gonna show you with the amount of people that are gonna go to our games and everything else that you need to pick us. Uh, I mean, I don't blame him. This is kind of what you got to do, but it's still weird to me a little bit. Nashville, one of the teams to make it to twenty-eight. Uh, have you ever looked at someone? very smart, very capable, and they do certain things, and you think to yourself, this execution is absolutely perfect, but the idea is inherently stupid? Yes. This is how I kind of feel. They're doing this the right way, bringing the team up from the PDL to the USL, trying to get increased attendance, getting good talent, Right approach, public-private partnership for the stadium, all fantastic. But the idea of Nashville having a professional soccer team, especially an MLS soccer team, is stupid. Why? It is really stupid. Hold on, you just blanketly say it's stupid. Yes, I do. You can't just say that and nothing else, though. Like, why? Okay, Nashville, 
look at where you are. Look at what you're known for. I automatically think Nashville. I just don't think the TV show with Hayden Panettiere, who is still hot in my mind, and... Okay, Agreed. before Agreed. before I go on a tangent about her and Claire from Heroes, I'm going to push forward. You have that. I mean, when when we when I was younger, Claire from Heroes, man. Mm-hmm. You <laughs> you, know. you know you know what's up. You know what's yeah. up. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So you think that you think the rich musical history, Grand Ole Opry, things like that. You think football, you think Vanderbilt, which, okay, you don't think about them too much in terms of football. You think of the Volunteers. You even think about the Titans when they first moved from Houston. They played there before in doing all this and moving on to the Music City Miracle, which I still cry about. Anyway... (laughs) Trust me, that season, that it was a damn forward pass anyways. Um, you think about moments like that. You think about the Predators and how their uniforms have gone from half decent to awesome. And the fact that even now you can digest the idea of them having a hockey team because of their recent success. That alone was a stretch. You really want to add soccer I mean think about your top country stars do you really want them wearing their hats tilted far too forward sitting on a stool with a guitar trying to think of rhymes for the word offside I personally don't and if you sat and thought about that image long and hard enough you realize it wouldn't make sense ah Yeah, this is, um, you know, the thing is, though, like, you just said it, right? Like, they have a freaking hockey team there. Be happy so, with that. How you even have that? How cool I, I know, but you just said team. it, like, they got a hockey team there, so why can't they have a soccer team there? But the point, just because you have a team doesn't mean it makes sense. I mean, yeah, the Columbus Blue Jackets exist. Do they make sense? No. Do I want to have a good long sit down with Gary Bettman because of things like that? Yes. Don't make me want to have another sit down with Don Garber because I will if I have to. (laughs) I, I mean, that's part of an area of the country where I could see it. Dude. I mean, and you don't hmm. have a ton of teams there for good reason. I mean, you're right next to the Appalachians, for Christ's sake. I you know, really but, want me to go down that road? But you want to have diversity in where you have teams. Yes, I, I, I get be... diversity, but I mean, how much diversity is good? Ah. <laughs> uh... Well, to me, there's limits. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what's the... what's the, Okay, so you're saying not them, then. Right. At, let's say that probably North Carolina is going to... One of the two cities is going to get one, be, especially with the NWSL team being there. And okay. they peeled the bathroom thing and all that. Yeah. I'm cool yeah. with that. Looks like Tampa Bay probably might be in the running now. Again, yeah. I have a three-phase plan. And okay, in a slight amendment to my plan from the midweek, say you don't use Tropicana Field for Australian Rules football. Have you ever thought about reviving the game of Austis? But again, that's phase three. Phase one is Tampa Bay getting the team. I am okay with that. Well, I mean, I know they've done a lot to to really go after and getting it. So, I mean, I don't have a problem with that either. I just, I just don't really have a problem if if Nashville becomes one of the teams. I like now it better than like Sacramento or 
I'm not a big fan of Sacramento getting a team either. I don't mind San Diego so much because I want them to have something. The Chargers are gonna, you know, gonna leave and all that. No, they've left. (laughs) Well, left. You know, I I want them to to have something that besides the Padres, so I'm fine with that. But like, you know, I wouldn't want Sacramento getting it instead. No, uh, no, that's another stupid. No, that's. Stupid. You know, I uh, there's what so let so you have four spots. I I don't even remember the damn, especially with San Louis not being able to get a get a spot. Now that's stupidity in of itself. Do you really expect the proud soccer heritage of the city of St. Louis to be carried on by the ambush? And yes, I am going to disrespect a team that goes one and nineteen over the course of a season. <laughs> yeah, see, but like, you okay, you want them to represent you in the soccer community. You want them. You have a good century of history on your back, and you have guys that dress in all black and can struggle against the Florida Tropics. And the Florida Tropics are my team. <laughs> but I mean, my. God, them. <laughs> yeah, so let's let's count one of the Carolina teams will probably get Kay. a spot with all the stuff with Phoenix. No, I don't know. No, I know you said no, but no, you know you got to think about it. I have thought about it, and Boston's gourmet pizza still hasn't gotten back to me. I feel offended. <laughs> So that uh, pushes me further into a no. You know, at Tampa Bay, they've they've been doing what they've been doing. You know, San Diego. Oh. Yes. So you got one team left, and it's like, what? You're gonna pick Detroit? Mm. I mean, I, I love San Antonio. I'm not gonna be wrong. If uh, it's between San Antonio and Nashville, just because I have the Texas connection and everything, but. If it's between San Antonio and Nashville, I pick San Antonio. Right, but I'm just, I'm just saying that, like, you know, if we're if we're you're giving me the option like Sacramento, Detroit, I'm going to tell you I want Nashville. Well, if you're giving me that option, as weird as I would. Say, damn okay, so oh. Nashville. All right, here's pretty much what probably is going to wind up happening. Okay. You won't get both the Carolina teams. You'll get one. I think you. I think yeah, the reason why you have. One I think enough. the reason why you have one both is so that to make sure that that yeah. North Carolina gets one. Right. And I think San Diego with Landon Donovan being there and all that stuff. I feel like they're pretty much a. They're gonna happen. Okay. And then let's say Tampa Bay happens. Okay. So you've got. Cincinnati, Phoenix, Nashville, Sacramento, and San Antonio all fighting for the one, and Detroit all fighting for the one spot. Cincinnati, San Antonio, Detroit. Those would be my top three. Damn. Uh, I think for me, like... (laughs) I... (laughs) And honestly, I would really, because you already have Houston and Dallas, you don't want to create congestion in Texas, even though it is a fantastic soccer market. Yeah, but those cities are hours away from each other. Okay, but my whole point is, you said yourself, and I'm going to use your logic in this argument about diversity, I would split it between... I would knock out San Antonio, and it would be a toss-up between Cincinnati and Detroit. And because Detroit is still Detroit, I would pick Cincinnati in that case. Uh, For me, it would be between Cincinnati, Nashville, and San Antonio. Again, if you're presenting that as those options... Well, I mean, we can can agree that North Carolina is getting one. Yes. Okay. San Diego Agreed. is probably getting one. Footy McFooty face. Agreed. Yeah, and 
unless Tampa Bay goes totally south, they're probably going to get one by all the things that are being done right now that's positive. Agreed again, and the fact that if mayoral elections run right, I could potentially have connections with the mayor, and I think my three-step plan would be just crazy enough that he would want it to work. That's what I'm saying, though. So you got all these teams. Phoenix would... I no. think that would... I'm not saying that I want it to happen. I'm saying that MLS is going to look at it from... At least it's not in California, and it's still in the sort of western area so they might consider it i think cincinnati with the then when they realize it's in the desert and you'd still have stadium issues and on the whole is kind of stupid yeah they throw that out i agree with you but that's that's what like cincinnati i think it's all about the the attendance uh you know the the amount of fans that are going to that stadium and and that's a big deal obviously Yeah. yeah Uh, you know, I think Detroit's just one of those, like, I think they're they're being considered because I mean, personally, with me, Detroit is still, well, kind of Detroit. Uh, I get it. They have history, especially with the Silver Dome and Pontiac hosting matches in the 94 World Cup, eh, yeah, but mm, in my mind, it's still Detroit. I would have them up if I've only got between a few options, but they're not the number one. And again, if you take the diversity argument like you presented out of it, I think San Antonio would be fantastic. You could create a whole Lone Star series just like you have the Cascadia Cup. But if you're Yeah, really I'd love ta- to see that. Yeah, but if you're really talking about oh different places and stuff where you wanna be, San Antonio notches down in the pecking order because of that. Especially because you're getting a second Florida team with Tampa Bay, another Southern California team with San Diego, and your other teams that you mentioned, you got all those covered. Now you want to have a bit of an oddball. Nashville's too odd. I don't think there's nothing too odd for MLS at this point. Uh, but, well, if you want to be on a track where, as vague as it is, one of the top ten leagues in the world by 2022, and da 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 da, and blah 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 blah. Yeah, there is something is too odd. <laughs> hey, I mean, they already have the team up there in Minnesota. You know, could you use a Detroit to to have that rivalry? Sure. Uh, yeah, I'm not saying no. A, especially if you create the whole central slash midwestern division. Chicago, Minnesota, Detroit, maybe throw in Columbus, done. Yeah, I, I just don't see why the league just doesn't. You're already hitting 28. You might as well just made it 30. Yeah. Just making it even 30 at that point. I just. But the only downside with 30, with 30, you're going to have to expand to 32. With 28, you can still schedule in groups of four. Mathematically, that's the ideal. That's why Manfred wants to expand to the 32, because groups of four is easier to do than groups of five. Oh, yeah, the divisions and everything else. Yeah, certainly. I think at that point, if MLS got to 32, I think I would be more able to agree with your idea of divisions. Mm Mm-hmm. As is even the fact that when they get to 24, they can even experiment and try the old NASL format of the 70s. At that point, I would love to have yet a separate sit-down with Don Garber saying, Hi, I have a math degree, and I know what I'm doing. Here's my idea for a schedule. What say you? (laughs) How long? So, 28 is by what? 27 by 4. No, no, so, like, 28 is their goal by 2022? Is that the goal? Or is it by 2020? I, 
I don't remember the exact time frame. I would have sworn I said 2022 because they wanted to try to get to 24 by 2020. I swear, just give up on David Beckham and just give it to one of these teams and just agreed. Let agreed. him. You know that they're not going to stop at twenty eight. Once you get to twenty eight, you're so close to having that NFL number. They're going to do it. And the only they're... reason why the NFL wanted to get to thirty two is because of the scheduling of the groups of four. The only reason they got to twenty eight is because they were contractually obligated to in terms of the merger when it was completed in 1970. If the NFL were really smart, they would have kicked out two teams and they would have stopped the 24. Right. Or, well, four teams. But, uh... No, when the AFL but, and NFL originally... Well, but you're first, saying, there were oh, they had 2060, okay. Yeah, and then they had to expand to 28 by 1979, so in 76, that's when the Seahawks and the Bucks were born, fulfilling that part of the agreement. I'm fine with that. I don't think I could imagine the league without the Bills now. Yeah, I mean, but yeah, you could have at that time, especially since you were changing competition, you could have easily picked two teams to get rid of, have it at 24 and keep it that way. Because if you look at any league, the growth in the model and it's struggling, your diminish your point of re- or diminishing point of diminishing returns is really at 16 teams. The fact that right. you can go beyond 16 and have some value, but not as much as you're adding to get to 16. By the time you get to 24, any additional expansion is pretty much worthless and then begins to hurt you. Right. Uh, yeah, I think uh, just I wish they would just be like, look, David Beckham, when you get your stuff sorted... We'll do a, a 29 team or whatever. And no, we'll if, I, if I'm them, I'm saying, look, David, we love you. You're awesome. We want to honor our contract. Miami ain't happening. We've got other teams. If you want to use your stick of the ownership in one of those other bids, we will gladly abide by the terms of our contract. But for the love of God, stop it. Let it go. <laughs> I agree with you. I'd love that. Just... Just end it, because it's not going anywhere, and you're wasting that spot on one of these great cities that could have a team. You could have the 28 for sure, instead of playing around, and you're going to wind up with 27 waiting around for David Beckham to get his stuff figured out. I I would give him an ultimatum, like, dude, you have until this certain year to get this done and if not we're going to already have one of these teams ready and they're going to take your spot and there will be no Miami so yeah that's basically like I would do it just giving him a timeline it's like look this isn't happening you could either give up entirely or here's the expansion bids pick one throw your weight behind it your choice backs yeah, but I mean, this has been interesting. Of course, again, it'll be a while before they decide. I feel like at the All-Star game, they're going to announce two of them. They always seem to do stuff like that at the All-Star game. Uh, and then we'll get the other two at some other date or something. But Probably after MLS Cup, right in the yeah. middle of the season when they need to create news. Right. So uh, until the midweek... Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, you can, uh, of course, if you like what you heard here, you can follow me on Twitter at WTMSean. You can follow Eric at Squid Sports Head. Uh, you can listen to Eric on the WTM Network, which you can go subscribe to uh, on the Point of Viewer uh, show, where he basically gives his thoughts on just anything he feels like. And he is also on This Week in the AFL with uh, Mr. Stephen Err. Uh, I, of course, have a bunch of shows on the network as well. You know, the Wrestling the Facts podcast, Video Games podcast, which just had a new episode la- uh, yesterday. Um, so, uh, Football and Max, everything. We got we got it all going on. Uh, make sure you check it out. And, of course, check out W10Net.com, where you get uh, not only the podcast, but so much more. So, 
And uh, as a bit of a deep tease, um, the first ten minutes of Point of Viewer are going to be weird. Stick with me. <laughs> All right. See, there you go. Uh, another reason to check that out on Wednesday night. Uh, probably Thursday morning for you on the on demand. So until then, everybody, we will see you later. Hey. The following podcast is a W2M Network original production. Visit W2Mnet.com for all of our other great podcasts, plus news, reviews, articles, and opinions from the worlds of wrestling, video games, football, and entertainment.